Okay, so welcome back. Marquez, welcome to the Putter Studio. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, no, I think that we talked about it at the end of the, uh, the fairway wooden hybrid fit, uh, how unique a putter fit is. It's not going onto the shop floor at a big box store and just rolling a few and going, yeah, well, this one seems to go in more than this one. And, yep. you know, I like the look and feel of it. Uh, we're, we're really going to get into the nitty gritty and the science behind uh, putting, maybe even in more depth than we did uh, in the bay. Okay, I'm excited, yeah. Definitely. Sounds good. Tell me a little bit about your own putter. You've got the TaylorMade, the old school, uh, the old Rossa. Yeah, Monza mm -hmm. Spider, something like that. Yep. So this is the newer version of what I have. Exactly. But it was kind of just that. It was like I, maybe 12 something years ago, I got it, yep. got used to it, and now I've just like just been using it ever since. Yeah. So I feel very calibrated with it, and I've used mallets pretty much my whole career, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm just open to open trying to other try stuff. other stuff. I mean, we said uh, off camera there, you've not had that putt in the bag for that long because you don't like it. Yep. It works, you like it. it yep. It's obviously a comfort factor for you, for sure. So, um, I mean, this is pretty close in terms of the, the current Spider, the EX range. So let's roll a few with that one. Let's see if a, a mallet and a, and a Spider and, and pure roll technology that's on the face, let's see if that's what you need or we need to kind of dive into some of the other tech on the, on the bay. Okay. okay, sounds good. You know, we, we look at club delivery, we look at face angle path, all that sort of stuff contributing towards ball flight. When it comes to putter fitting, it's, it's very much on face angle. Um, the more loft we have, the less important face angle is. Okay. Right, it's always important, but when we have, when we have basically one or two degrees of loft, Anything that's open or closed will deflect that golf ball offline so easily. There's nothing in, in the loft sense really to, to deflect upwards rather than, than you know, laterally. Mm -hmm. So basically our putter fit here will be really centered around the rate of rotation of the putter and can we map that rate of rotation to get back to square at the point of impact. Um, we have a 12 foot putt here. In this 12 foot putt, we have an allowance of one degree open or closed, okay. literally just one. Yeah. So within that kind of two degree window, we'll, we'll make it either side of that hole. And if we get outside of that, we're, we are going to veer off to the, uh, the outside of the hole. Let's roll a couple in that and see what your ball roll looks like. Okay. Slow-mo camera and everything. Everything. 720 frames, it's, it's <sighs> seen it all. Love it. Excellent. That's all of them. Man. I got two. <laughs> well, it might be a, a pretty short putter fit if it goes by uh, if it goes by that. So the screen is kind of split in two from on the left side what the, the putter does in motion, and then on the right hand side we've got what the ball does in motion. So using the traffic light system, anything green the putter system really likes, anything um, obviously amber or red is telling us just to keep an eye on it. If we look at, we, we talked about face rotation to start with. If mm. we look at the ball roll on that last one, so we made that just kind of into the, the right half of the hole uh, quite nicely. So there's a projection of that. So uh, distance to hole at 12 feet, yep, we made it. 13, we might have made it and 14, 15, uh, we're starting to kind of maybe flirt with the right edge. The reality is even the best players in the world though from 12 feet only make 29% of their putts. So mm. if we're making these regularly, it means we've got exceptional face control. Uh, so that's a great place to start with the putter fitting. When we talk about rate of rotation, you know, those were the two key things, face angle and rate of rotation. Mm. We're gonna look at the, the face angle and, and its journey into impact. So three inches out from impact, that face was 2.77 degrees open, and then it was closing ever so slightly as it came in. So we want to be making sure that we understand how much open that face is as it comes into impact and how quickly it's closing. Those are really the keys to creating face control. 
That was an excellent, excellent putt. I, I literally would, wouldn't change a thing about that last one. Is a good putt square the whole way? I mean, I feel like you naturally open no, and close, right? No, no. And, 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 you know, square the whole way is, is nothing but a sensation. Okay. Um, so very rarely, I think I was only one player I've ever tested in Quintic who actually had the putter face anywhere even close to square for yeah. the whole stroke. Okay. So, yeah, it always has some form of uh, rotation. Just hammering it in there. Tell me about the greens that you put on. Are they generally quite quick? Are they slow? <laughs> well, you know, New Jersey greens, yeah. sometimes they're aerated, sometimes they're sandy, sure. sometimes they're phenomenal. They're generally not fast, actually. Yeah. They're usually either wet and slow or like middling speed. Right. Yeah. Um, is your speed control generally pretty good? Yeah, I think, I mean, generally I'm, I'm comfortable with the putter, so if I get to spend any time on the practice green, I'm usually good. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah. I love it. And I would guess that that would be the case because if anything that popped up as red on that last putt was that you had a little bit too much launch, Mm -hmm. A little bit too much launch generally doesn't mean anything particularly bad on slow greens. If we, uh, if we have too much launch on, on fast greens, it's normally a bigger problem. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard to hold your line. So if we think of the bouncing ball, if we have the green on any kind of tilt, right, if there's break in any way, if we have a bouncing ball, it's impossible to pick the right line um, and have it stay on that line because it's creating energy off of that slope. Okay. So on a slower green, that's much less of a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, again, face angle-wise, we are very close. The blue zone here is, is kind of ideal PGA Tour standard, um, but the green zone is, is really, really good as well. Got it. Okay, just a little block. So telling us exactly what we saw, which was the putter didn't quite have as much rotation on the way in there. We had a little bit more of an into-out path and we never really got it squared up. Got it. Okay, which is fine. You're making it easy on me here. <laughs> I wonder how much the club, the differences in the club or grip or shaft affect those types of things. Like, I guess face control is just... If you get it aligned, can you can you make impact where you aligned it? Um, so, I mean, in terms of making impact where we align it, it's, a, it's an interesting point because the only consistent thing that I really see is a bit of a problem is on the on the club twist. Mm -hmm. um, so, shot one and two, we did have a fair amount of opening deflection on the putter. That means we struck it in the toe. Um, so even though we lined it up in the middle, by the time we came back to impact, we did hit it somewhere out in the toe. So um, I, what, one of the things I was going to suggest for more solid contact was actually concentrating on feeling like you hit your putts marginally into the heel of the putter. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, we saw earlier on your tendency, if anything is to leave the face a little open, we talked about that one degree buffer that we have open or closed. If you have a 0.75 open face and you hit it dead center, you'll make the putt. If you have a 0.75 open face and you hit it half an inch in the toe, the toe will deflect enough for you to miss the putt. Mm -hmm. So I never want to see a person or player compound a face angle and a strike point. I don't mind if you have an open face and a heel strike and it closes slightly and they counter one another. Mm -hmm. I just don't want them overlapping. Got so it. let's do one more where we feel like we're going to ever so slightly heel, uh, heel strike this putt. So it's like a pretty solid one, it wiggled a little bit. So the best face angle we've had yet mm -hmm. and a very minimal twist, I mean, a tenth of a degree. So if we look at that on the, the push-pull chart, we're making that at 20 feet all day long and, and, and more, to be honest. Um, yeah. That was really, really good. Occasionally you do launch it with a little bit too much, uh, a little bit too much launch angle. Which is upward launch? Yeah, a little bit too much launch. Now, that, that is very typical of a mallet. And the center of gravity is a little further back. It does tend to launch the ball a little bit higher. The pure, grow, the pure groove uh, roll as well, pure roll grooves, uh, they, they launch a little bit 
uh, more the, the jaw and the groove is tilted, so it's designed to kind of pop the ball up in the air. Yeah. To counter that, let me see if we can add just a fraction of forward shaft lean uh, okay. at address. Excellent. Okay, not bad. We got the shaft angle to vertical, so 0 0.06. Um, so it was, it was ever so slightly leaning back. So let's do one more where we just add another press little, a little bit. bit. Yep, just press it a touch more. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely not a weakness of the game, that's for sure. <laughs> good. Really, really good. I mean, if anything, um, you know, 2.56, it brought the launch down a little bit too much, mm -hmm. but that's, that's I'm, I'm fine with exaggerating that just a little bit. The style of putter's great for you. Um, let's just work a little bit on not having to make you or even ask you to, to lean that shaft a little bit. Let's work on a putter that has specs that does that a little bit more naturally, okay? Okay, yeah. Okay, let's roll a couple. Love it. Just a little hoppy on the, the ball roll. Okay, roll a couple more. A little more forward shafting again. Yeah. Really good. <clears throat> I tell you what, there would be a queue at the door for you to have you in a scramble team. Oh, yeah. You drive it yeah, long. Give me the shirt you, game. You putt it great. Yeah. And you've got a few strokes up your sleeve. You're literally the ideal scramble uh, partner. Much, much better in terms of the launch and the roll there. Okay. okay, so 1.85 is, you know, pretty much at the high end of, of ideal, but if you're putting on slow jersey greens, mm -hmm. you know, I'll call that perfect. Sure. If you're putting on, you know, quick country club greens, we, we you know, have a degree or so is fine. Um, much, much more forward uh, rotation there as well, which is nice. Um, that was excellent. Uh, you, you do a fantastic job of managing the, the, the face angle. You really do. Pop that one. I was going to say, you don't miss. I mean, the reality is you do the hard part really, really well. Uh, the hard part being the, the sort of face angle. Mm. With this one, you actually don't get the face as open um, as you do with the, the spider. It stays a little bit more square. So if we see that one early on with your putter, three inches out, we were about 2.8 degrees open. Mm -hmm. With this one, you actually get it a little bit, little bit more square, 1.7. Leaves you a little bit less, uh, uh, less rotation to kind of get it back to square. That's, that's really, really good. That's, as I say, that's the, the unicorn right there when we get it 0.0. .0. Uh, and we make it absolute dead center. Nice. Really, really good stuff. A little bit of backspin, let's see why that was. We struck down on it ever so slightly. Right. Again, we, I mean, we could, there's so much information in here, we could pick the bones out it, you know, um, for, for a long, long time. Probably, if anything, I would say ball position a little high in your stance will allow the putter to rise up a little bit. Yep. We want to be kind of grabbing the putter as it's on the rise in order to create the, the lift and roll. Yep. Um, that's why that ball had a fraction of backspin. But again, that is that is not something that's going to make you uh, miss your putt when you have a face angle that's that good. So I think from a face style perspective, um, I would go with something like this. Also face balanced. Uh, the CG is a little bit further forward because we're effectively taking cutting that weight. This this middle part out, it moves the CG a little bit more to the front and out to the sides. That's, a, that's something that will increase MOI. Mm -hmm. um, and also having a less aggressive groove pushes the ball forward and less up. Okay. Okay. Let's roll one last one for luck. Sneaky side door. Love it. Excellent, excellent. In fact, give me, give me one more. That shaft angle went back a little bit there. So you've done a really good job in the angle of attack. Mm -hmm. 1.4 up with the ball position. So 
Um, with it, yeah, exa okay. a little lean with that upward angle. Got it. Kind of feels. You can kind of feel when you hit it down versus up. Yep. Yep. So shaft angle is still a little bit back there. Okay. Okay. A little bit more lean. Mmm. Yeah. Felt felt pretty good to roll that. Huh. Really good job. Perfect there. So there's your, there's your perfect combo. 1.3 degrees forward shaft lean, a little bit up an angle attack, create the launch, create the forward rotation, actually reduce the rate of rotation a little bit. Mm -hmm. Love that, that that's, uh, that's your combo for sure. So with a putter uh, of this style, a little bit more forward uh, in the stance, that's, yeah. that's exactly how you're gonna, you're gonna roll it um, a little bit more optimal. So I think what'll be cool is when you get this out in the course and see that whether you can get the same level of confidence that you do with your old uh, your old Rossa. Yeah. Um, that's going to be the the challenge, isn't it? You've had so many, obviously, you mm -hmm. know, memories of how good that one is. Um, but this one certainly built around sort of the the Quintic system is going to be ideal. Sweet. Okay. Let's do one last one. Yeah, one more with this one. It's probably the easiest putter fit I've ever done. I mean, it's literally the only thing that we really had to fix was the, the vertical component. Um, so it literally just comes down to that, that shaft angle from time to time. Okay. That's literally the only variable. So your ball at times will pop up and launch. I mean, this is as good as you'll see. Yeah. Everything over there is on the, the On the long putts, that's when I've noticed it. Absolutely. Like a 40 footer yeah. and you come through and it's, it bounces once like or twice. Like a little dewy morning, you can see it's uh, skipping yeah, yeah. Uh, like a stone. Exactly. So that's when, you know, just to, just to have that, you know, where it's like, okay, you know, handle a little more forward, ball mm -hmm. position a little more up, and then obviously, you know, feel like you're kind of almost on the rise a little bit. Mm. Okay, while keeping that handle forward, you know, not, not kind of allowing the, the head to overtake the handle too much. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Marquez. This Thank is you, great. Man. This is fun. I've learned a lot. Yeah. No, there's a lot to it when you, you know, when you go top to bottom. I mean, it, it's, it's a heck of an undertaking. It's a lot of shots. Yep. Uh, it's a lot of information. But, um, you know, you've, you've got all the components of a really, really good game. So it's hopefully we can get you out there and it's play promising. a little bit more. It's very promising. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, well, we'll see how they how they how they perform. I mean, obviously course, I've yeah. been I want to play more too, so yeah. hopefully all of this can be put together more consistently, so. Definitely. I think that's the thing with with the people we see with with custom clubs that work a little bit better than what they've had. It does give you that impetus to get to the course and practice a little bit more and yeah. play a little bit more and get a little bit more out of your game. It's just, it's going to allow you to extract more enjoyment out of it, which is at the end of the day, the main thing. Yeah. So um, fingers crossed. I mean, we've been going up and down a little bit more to, to kind of the New York area. So it'd be great to get these clubs in your hands, maybe midsummer or something. We'll, we'll get together with you if you're in town. Yeah. We'll go for a game and uh, we'll see them in action. Yeah. Um, that would be awesome. It'd be good. Have you heard of Arcos before? I don't think so. Okay, no. okay. We're going to get you set up with Arcos. That's a, a sort of data sort of um, software. So it actually has some sensors on your clubs that, that um, track all your shots as you play. Okay. I've, after your round, it basically tells you where your strokes gained, where were they off the tee, where they in your putting, where they in your approach play, nice. and where you can improve on. So from a distance, um, we can kind of m monitor how the new clubs are going, yeah. and then we can make some tweaks uh, should we need to. That's exciting. Gonna be a lot of fun. Love the numbers. Absolutely. Love the numbers. Okay, guys, um, hope you enjoyed that. I mean, really cool to take someone like Marquez through the process, someone who's obviously got access to a lot of tech in another field, you know, but obviously golf is, is kind of, you know, a, a, different, a different field for you. Um, so cool to, to bring Marquez into, into TXG and go through the numbers. And ultimately, we can't wait to see the results. Same. Awesome. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.